life in prison, evidently to two individuals, shoplifting from a blockbuster was worth it. Let me explain to you guys what you're about to see. You're about to see footage taken by a blockbuster critic when he used to work at Blockbuster. See, while well, at Blockbuster, tons of crazy things happened. Guy came in with a shotgun, waved it around, asking for money out the till. The story today I'm about to tell you about, these guys got thrown in prison, probably for life. Uh, lesbians fighting in the store, an old man beating up a young dude in the store. Blockbuster was quite the crazy environment to work at. And there's so many stories I have to tell you guys about. This will be the first one in the series. But... In this story, I actually have footage from this camera. I carried this with me every day when I went to work. And I got footage of these guys getting arrested. I got footage of their getaway car, the police. Even when my employee put them in a headlock when he tried to get away. It was freaking awesome. But let me tell you how the night started out when these gentlemen first came into the store. Now, both of them entered. First thing I saw was that this guy had this big old jacket on. And I already knew the weather did not warrant that type of jacket. So I'm already watching him. But then one of those idiots sets off the fire escape that's on the right of the store. I go over there and shut it off. I'm like, what are you guys doing? He's sorry. He, he pushed me into it. I look outside of the door. There's a car parked right outside the fire escape door. Now, I know there's no businesses on that side of the, uh, we're like on the corner of a uh, shopping district or whatever. And there's no business over there on that side. All that's over there is the little driveway to get around to the back side of the shopping district. That's it. Used to be a Mr. Jim's back there, but it wasn't there anymore. And I was like, hmm, okay. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on these guys. And then one of my customers comes up and she tells me, I think those guys are trying to steal stuff. So I'm like, hmm, okay. I tell my employee, I'm going to the office real quick, uh, keep an eye on those two guys. But then one of the guys comes up to the front and he gets all in my face like this and he's asking me dumb questions. See, when people ask you really dumb questions, that's kind of a sign that they're trying to distract you from something. I know I got lots of dumb questions at Blockbuster, but this guy, as close as he got in the activity, it was already evident. So he's like, hey, um, you know, blocking my view from seeing the floor. Hey, do you think this movie be better on Blu-ray or this movie be better on Blu-ray? I just told him, I got to go to the office real quick, man. I got to make a real quick call. So I get up there. I'm on the phone with the non-emergency. I'm calling the police. They tell you not to call the, you know, the 911 thing. So I'm calling a non-emergency. I'm just, hey, uh, send some police down here. You got some guys that are stealing it. And I'm watching them as I'm on the phone with the lady. And I see them over in the television section slipping stuff into the guy with the jacket's jacket. He's slipping stuff in there. Box sets of television series. And so I'm like, yeah, you guys have to hurry up over here. And they start going to the checkout. Now, when they start heading over to the checkout, I'm like, okay, uh, ma'am, I have to go. They're trying to get out the store. So I just put the phone down, and I walk out. And my employee, uh, Sir Clinton, I already told him that those guys are trying to steal. He says, okay, guys, I'm going to have to walk, have you guys walk through the uh, metal detector. Not the metal detector, but, you know, those little security tag detecting things. And the guy goes off. What a surprise. And he says, sir, can you come back out through this way? He, yeah, 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 yeah. He reads into his jacket and just pulls out like a couple of DVDs, puts on the counter, and then tries to rush through my employee. Now, my employee is built like a brick wall. So it didn't really work out for that guy. But little did they both know that I had locked the entrance and the exit to the store already. Which is one thing I probably I was going to get in trouble for because 
they said I was holding people against their will in the store, you know, just because I locked the door, even though you can unlock it from the inside. But So what you're about to see is footage of my employee putting the guy in a headlock while I'm standing at the entrance letting customers exit the store because they can tell that we're pretty busy. <laughs> you know what? I just noticed something. Take a look at that sign. This door to remain unlocked during business hours. <laughs> I had that door locked. You see those two struggling? They leaned up against that door. It didn't budge. You know why? Because I locked it. I wasn't letting these guys get away. I don't care what the policies were. Saved them $700. Yeah, took him down. Put him in a headlock. It was hilarious. This fool was tamed. hear that sigh that was a sigh saying this is every day at Blockbuster but also at that point I was always thinking about those police reports filling those things out lengthy sheets front and back all the details you can think of about the incident having to sign it and then all of the garbage I hate that part that's the worst part about calling the police the police reports it's like you know the essay session of an ACT or an SAT. You gotta write it in, write it all in. It's annoying. It's really annoying. And that was the worst part about getting shoplifted or getting robbed was filling out the police report. But anyway, as you guys can see, my my friend, he had the guy. He wasn't going anywhere. And he has these fools tamed. He has them stand there at the counter thinking about what they did handing over their name, their licenses, if they have it, if they had them on them. I don't know which one had what on them, but he was getting their info. Are they on their way, Jamin? Yeah, they're on their way. Bam! Policeman. Yep, there's idiot number one. Look at his shirt. Hi. You'll do. <laughs> yeah, that's what your buddy, your cellmate in jail is going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you about this lady right here. She is so freaking cool. You see this idiot over here in the corner? Well, at first he was sitting on the floor to the left with his little buddy, but they started talking and everything. And she noticed they were talking, and she grabbed that fool. She's like, this ain't no time for y'all be trying to discuss y'all story. You get over here. Get over here. And she was manhandling this guy, okay, and dragged him all the way over there. That mess was hilarious. Now, things are going rather smoothly. I'm very entertained, I'm ecstatic, I'm watching these people ruin their lives over some movies, and I told one of the officers, hey, you guys remember that car I showed you earlier, that green car? I told the officer, there is a car parked on the side of the store, and they tried to go out the fire escape, they wanted to see if it was going to go off, thank goodness it did, but there has to be a driver, there has to be a driver. And the officer, he strokes his chin for a second, goes like that, and then just leaves the store, just up and leaves. I'm like, what the, I'm guessing he's going to go get the car towed or go check out the car. Which, by the way, I got to see the contents that were in the car. They had condoms. Uh, they had what the police described as tools used to break into a store. And all types of other little gadgets. I I don't know. I just remember condoms and tools to break into places. Crowbars and stuff like that. And the officer, a couple minutes later, comes back. And he brings this chick inside with him. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? Why are you bringing customers in the store? We're closed for the moment. He's like, this is no customer. This is my Cold. customer. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, she's the driver. Yeah, the officer saw that girl walk across the front of the store. Like, this is the screenshot here at the front of the store. He saw her walking by really fast and thought it was suspicious. And I guess he kept a mental image of what she looked like, just in case. And so he went out looking for her. He went to the subway next door. He went into the beauty supply next door. And then he went to the Albertsons next door. Found her. Found her in the corner of the store in the bakery section. Not really shopping, but kind of trying to blend in and hide out. I guess when she saw the police drive up, I, I guess she thought, Oh, this is not going to work. Oh, my God, they must have got caught. <sighs> yeah. Three of them. Three people in Texas doing a crime is organized crime. This is her second strike for organized crime with the same two guys. Yeah, how smart is she? And the guys are even dumber. At this point here, yeah, an officer moved those two back together because they were taking up space because they had to take a lot of pictures like that. Those are all the Blu-rays we have on display that they had all moved away over here. Right over here near the fire escape. And you can see they got them piled over here on the shelves. You see them? Yeah, geniuses. Yeah, we saw those holes over there and we knew they were freaking stealing. We knew they just couldn't get it out of here. Especially not through that fire escape. Yeah, they tried to get 15 Blu-rays from us, but they weren't getting out of there with those. Do we have to vacuum, Angela? <laughs> so we still got all those duties, huh? Yeah, we still have the vacuum. Yeah, look over there. You see Dummy 1, look, Dummy 2. Yeah, I gotta excuse my cinematography. At the time, I wasn't really paying attention to what I was recording, which is pretty understandable. Let me do a jump here real quick to the car Look at and show that. you guys a bit more. They got the license plate covered up and everything. Yeah, These guys are up. prepared. Cars on. Yeah, they got the lights on and everything. They're ready to go. It's kind of weird because I commentated on some of the footage that I took. So I'm doing commentary on commentaries. I don't know. Anyway, it was about the end of the night. Things are settling down. But one thing I really wanted to get was the long march to the police car. There was nothing better than watching these three fools march their way to the end of their lives. Yeah, I did those. I want to shoot it. On the way. Hmm? I won't forget. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's all the interesting footage I have from that night. Some of it got deleted because I let the police borrow my camera. You guys saw that I had a lot of interesting footage from that night. And while the police were all there, there was like seven different police officers there. I uh, popped this little sucker into the PS3 and showed the police on the big screen everything that happened before they got there. Quite nice. They saw that and they were like, hey, can we borrow it? And I'm like, uh, sure, yeah. I mean, that's great evidence. They deleted the uh, video when uh, the guy, you know, shoulder ran my employee. And that didn't really work out too well for him. And they deleted some other footage on accident. I mean, all you have to do is just touch that little trash can twice and you delete a video. So I should have told them, you know, the instructions before they left. But yeah, after work, I had to go to the police station and get this camera. And when the police chief came out, he was like, hey, and you know, he was one of my customers. He was like, hey, man, I know you got a YouTube channel, but I want to ask you something. Do not upload this footage to the internet until we give you the A-OK. -okay. I'm like, why? He's like, because this 
this is key evidence to, you know, commit these guys. Throw them in jail, prison. So what we want, you know, if you upload this to the internet, their lawyers or their attorneys or whatever could possibly, you know, throw out that evidence with something. I, I don't particularly remember what he said, but he said that they could use the footage, you know, be on the internet as some kind of excuse to throw out the evidence, which is the main evidence of what they did. But he said things will be a-okay to upload if they confess, which they did. You know, three strikes of organized crime, and then one idiot had, like, a, a assault charge or whatever. These were some crazy kids. They were no older than I am. They were, like, 20, 21 years old. And the girl was probably uh, 19. I think she was 19 years old. And then the police chief, he came back. Uh, he was one of my customers. He came back in the store one day, and he told me the girl hasn't confessed yet. So that gave me a delay. But then she ended up confessing, so everything worked out just fine. Which is why the footage is up on the internet now. Anyway guys, that's all I got for this edition of My Store, My Story. You know, idiots. Only idiots would shoplift from a blockbuster to that extent. Now I'm going to give you guys two options. You guys can vote here on what you want. I got something similar to a guidelines to being a customer rant right here. We have a video that's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be a My Story, My Story, but I want to call it a movie from hell. Serious, I don't know. But it's going to be about movies, particular movies that released, that just made people's minds just shatter. Everything, went, common sense went out the window, people were acting crazy. For this movies. There are tons of movies that were like that. The one that I want to specifically talk about in this edition right here, if you guys vote on that, is Happy Feet. The day that movie released, the week that movie released, it was hell. And there are tons of other movies like that. Like The Brave One and tons and tons of black films. You guys have no idea what I went through with that. And those godforsaken Air Buddies movies. Save that for the rant. And then over here, you guys can vote on this one over here. This will be another My Store, My Story. It'll be kind of a comical story about when a, like a midget Latino came in and robbed us at gunpoint. It's a very funny story because I was messing with the guy the entire time he was there. And he had a shotgun. And I was messing with the guy. Messing with his mind. Playing with him. Asking him questions. Talking to him. It'll be quite a story. So you guys just vote on that. Let me know what you want. Black was the Critic is here to tell you that you will see a lot more Blockbuster related videos coming from me. Because that place was a facility that didn't just sell movies but produced a lot of lulls. <laughs>